In this video, we'll discuss the similarities and differences between neural networks and regression. A neural network consists of input nodes, a hidden layer, and output nodes. To compare neural networks with regression, we'll first look at networks without a hidden layer, and then see what happens when we include the hidden layer. In the previous video, we covered the basics of neural networks. And in another video, we discuss the basics of multiple linear regression. I will here use the exact same data set as in that video in order to compare with the output from neural networks. In the previous video about neural nets, we saw that the network with a binary outcome, with no hidden layer, and with a logistic activation function, generated the exact same results as logistic regression. In this video, we will instead focus on neural networks with a single output node with a continuous outcome, such as the predicted price of a car. Let's start to compare a neural network with simple linear regression on the following data. Suppose that we like to predict the price of the following car that is 3 years old. To predict the price of this car, we collect sales data on 6 similar cars. For example, Car number 3 is 2 years old and has a price of 21,000 euros. Let's plot this data, where this data point represents car number 1, whereas this data point represents car number 2, and so forth. Then we can use simple linear regression to fit a straight line to this data, so that the line is as close as possible to the data points. This means that we try to find the optimal value of the intercept, and the slope so that the sum of the square residuals, or errors, is as small as possible as we discussed in the video about least squares. For this data, the optimal value of the intercept is about 30.57, which means that the predicted price of a brand new car is 30,570 euros. The optimal value of the slope of the line has been estimated to negative 3.55 which can be interpreted as the price is predicted to decline by 3,550 euros when the car gets one year older. Once we have fitted the line to the data and estimated the parameters of the model, we can predict the price of our car with an age of 3. We can draw a vertical line from 3 until we hit the regression line. And then we draw a horizontal line until we hit the y-axis. The predicted price of the car according to the model, is about 20,000 euros. We can compute a more accurate prediction if instead used equation, where we simply set the age to 3, and do the math. By using linear regression, we have estimated the price of this car to about 19,920 euros. If we would predict the same thing with a network, we would use a network with only one input node, and one output node and train this network based on the following data. The weight associated with the bias would be estimated to the same value as the intercept in the regression model, whereas this weight will correspond to the slope of the regression line. Remember that when we train a network, we try to find the optimal weights that for example result in the lowest possible sum of squared errors, which is the same thing as we do in linear regression. Since we in this example only have one input signal and no hidden layer, n is here equal to 1, which means that we can delete this from the equation, so that we are left with the following equation. Remember that there are several activation functions to select between for our neural network. However, when we have a single output node on continuous scale, we usually use the identity activation function. If you plug in the equation with the weights in the identity activation function, we will have the following function that is used to compute the value of the output node. Let's also plug in the weights of the values in the function, like this. Note that this is exactly the same equation we used in linear regression to estimate the price. We can therefore conclude that this simple neural network, without the hidden layer and with the identity activation function, is exactly the same thing as linear regression in this case. To predict the price of the car using the network, we plug in the value in the input node. 
like this, and do the math. We see that the network predicts the exact same price as the linear regression model. Now, suppose that we also have information about the mileage. For example, car number 2 has been driven 25,000 miles. By using multiple linear regression, we can fit the following model to the data, where the intercept has now been estimated to 32.46. When the mileage is constant, then the price is reduced by 1,540 euros every year. This could be seen as how much the price is expected to fall each year if the car is not used. Even though we do not use the car, the price will still decline by 1,540 euros every year simply because the car gets older. For example, if you compare cars of the same age, the difference in price between these cars is then dependent on the mileage. If the age is kept constant, the price is reduced by 150 euros for every thousand miles. The corresponding neural network will look something like this, where we now have two input nodes. The values of the weights correspond exactly to the estimated parameters of the linear regression model. Suppose that we like to estimate the price of the following car. We therefore plug in the age and the mileage in the equation and do the math, we see that the model predicts the price to about 26,380 euros. We can calculate the same thing with a neural network. Since we in this case have two input nodes that are associated with the output node, n is here equal to 2, which means that we have the following equation. If you plug in the weights and the values of the two input nodes, and do the math, and plug in this value in the identity activation function. We see that the value of the output node is equal to 26.38, which is exactly the same value as the predicted value of our regression model. Note that we can also include a categorical variable in our model, such as type of color. In this example, car number 1, 3 and 6 have purple color, whereas car number 2, 4 and 5 a white color. Let's code purple color as ones and the white color as zeros. If you fit the multiple linear regression model to the data, we'll obtain the following estimated parameters. The variable color in this equation takes the value one if the car has purple color and zero if the car is white. This value can therefore be interpreted as a car with purple color has a predicted price that is generally 0.06 thousand euros or 60 euros greater than a white car with the same age and mileage. Suppose that we like to use the model to predict the price of the following car with purple color. Then we plug in the corresponding numbers here and do the math. The model predicts the price to 26,440 euros. Note that this calculation involves the rounded values of the estimated parameters. The corresponding neural network will look something like this, where we now have three input nodes. Using this network to predict the price of the following car will result in exact same predicted price as in the regression model. One problem with linear regression is that we have to assume that the price falls according to a straight line which means that the predicted price falls with the same amount every year. If we would collect the price on all the cars, we would probably see that the price starts to approach zero like this. Linear regression is not appropriate for this kind of data because the straight line does not fit well with the data. Also, a linear model will predict a negative price for cars that are older than 11 years. For this type of data, it seems reasonable to fit the curve instead of a straight line. One way is to use nonlinear regression where you fit a nonlinear function to the data. The problem with nonlinear regression is that we need to figure out an appropriate mathematical function that can be used to generate a curve that fits the data. Finding such function might be tricky when we have several input variables. This is where artificial neural networks become handy because they can help us to find nonlinear functions that can be fitted to the data. Suppose that we would train a neural network on the following data. 
if you use the following network, where we use a non-linear activation function for the two nodes in a hidden layer. Then we will be able to generate the following curve that fits the data. When we train a neural network on some data, it is recommended that we first somehow normalize the data because neural networks work best on such type of data. One way to normalize the data is to use the mean max normalization, where each variable is scaled so that it has a range between 0 and 1. For example, suppose that we would normalize the variable price. We then plug in the minimum value here and the maximum value here. For example, the normalized value of the price of car number 2 is 0 0.84. These are the normalized values of the two features or variables. The following network was trained on the normalized data where the weights were optimized to these values. Note that you might obtain different values of the weights than the ones shown here, because the values depend on the starting values you use, as we discussed in the previous video. Suppose that we like to use the network to predict the price of a car that is 4 years old. According to the curve, the predicted price seems to be around 16,000 euros. Let's use the network to predict more exactly. Since we have trained the network on normalized data, we need to plug in the corresponding normalized age. To predict the price of a car that is 4 years old, we plug in the corresponding normalized value of 0 0.3 in the network. Like this. To generate a nonlinear function, I have here selected the sigmoid or logistic activation function for the hidden layer. Note that you can try other activation functions. When the output is on continuous scale, one usually selects the identity activation function for the output node. Let's calculate the value of this hidden node, where we plug in the corresponding weights and the value of the input node, and do the math. We then plug in this value in the logistic activation function, and do the math again. The value of this hidden node is therefore 0 0.041, whereas the value of this hidden node is 0 0.966. To calculate the value of the output node, we plug in the value of the bias weight here, and the value of the first and second hidden node, like this. The value of the output node is therefore equal to 0 0.46. Let's place this value in the output node. To unnormalize this value, we need to solve this equation for x. Like this, we then plug in the maximum and the minimum value of our training data, and the output value from the network, and do the math. The estimated price of our 4 years old car is therefore about 15,500 euros, which corresponds to the height of the car. We will now see how to generate the car that is shown in this plot. If you plug in this equation into the logistic activation function, we can define the equation that computes the value of the first and second hidden node. Then we plug in these functions here, and the corresponding weights, and the bias weight into the identity function. Like this. This gives us the following nonlinear function. If you now plug in the value of the output node in this equation to unnormalize the data, we arrange the different values of the age between 0 and 1. Then we will be able to reproduce the curve. Nice! To evaluate how well the network fits the training data, we can calculate the sum of squared residuals or errors. A residual is the difference between the observed price and the predicted price according to the curve. If we would sum all the squared residuals, then we would get a value of about 11.69. The smaller this value is, the better the model fits the data. However, one problem is that we may encounter overfitting. If you use a network with many hidden nodes and layers, the network can fit the data a bit too well, like in this case, because the curve intercepts through almost every data point. In this example, 
the network learns too well because if we would remove the training data and collect a new data set on similar cars, then we see that the car does no longer fit well with the data. Our previous car based on a simpler network with just two hidden nodes makes more sense because it tries to find the general trend rather than fitting all training data perfectly. To compare a number of different network models and activation functions, we could, for example, collect the dataset and split it into a training dataset and a validation dataset. Then we use the training data where we train all the different networks on this data. Suppose that we have fitted three different network models to the training data that are represented by the three different curves. Then we remove the training data and plug in the validation data and calculate the sum of squared errors for each model based on the validation data. We can then select the model with the lowest sum of squared errors because such a model is likely to perform best on new data. We can of course extend the network to include more input nodes, but the math behind such a network will be way too complicated to show in this video. This is why this part of the network is usually considered as a black box. On my home page, I have a simple R code that you can try if you like to reproduce the example where we fitted the nonlinear function to the car size data. This was the end of this basic video about comparing artificial neural networks and regression models. Thanks for watching.